Okay, you may be like me and have some experience with hip pain and know how difficult it can be. Luckily, there are new advances in CT and MRI imaging when it comes to the hip, and it has changed the landscape of hip surgery. Orthopedic hip surgeon and sports medicine specialist, Dr. Andrew Dole from Star Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is here this morning to explain to you how these minimally invasive hip procedures work. Good morning, this affects morning. a lot of people these days. First of all, tell us a little bit about your yeah, so my name is Andrew Dold. Uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon based at Star Orthopedics and Sports Medicine up in Frisco, mm -hmm. Texas. Uh, I did my orthopedic surgery residency training at the University of Toronto, uh, followed by a fellowship at uh, NYU in New York City at Langone Medical Center and the Hospital for Joint Diseases. I specialize in conditions of the shoulder, knee, and hip, and uh, hip arthroscopy and reconstructive procedures of the hip. I think we're going to talk maybe a little bit more about that today. You got a pretty good little resume going there. Okay, <laughs> this is a, uh, a new surgery table that we are looking at. Can you walk me through what this is and what it's what's different here? Yeah, so this is a uh, hip surgery table by Stryker. It's called a post-free distraction table. So the hip joint is a little bit different than the, than the knee or the shoulder in that it's a tight classic ball and socket mm -hmm. joint and that creates a problem in that in order to address pathology inside the joint we have to distract the hip to open it up to be able to get inside there. Get it apart. I exactly, yeah, <laughs> dislocate the joint. So classically uh, how this has been accomplished is by using a post like this between the patient's legs and as barbaric yes. as this sounds, uh, the patient's placed into a table like this uh, and their legs are just basically pulled up against that post which allows us to distract the, uh, distract the hip to get inside. This is a new table, it's called a post-free distraction table, so we can, we can get rid of the post. Um, <clears throat> as you might understand, pulling a patient's leg up against the post is associated with a number impor of important consequences or risks uh, to the patient, such as nerve injury or palsy in the nerves running between their leg. Interesting. And this post-free distraction table allows us to get the same amount of distraction through the patient's hip joint, allows us to access the joint exactly as we would by using the post, but mitigates these complications right. and risk profile. So it's a, it's a much safer uh, alternative for the patient. We're doing this for all of our hip arthroscopies these days. And anecdotally, the patients prefer this. It's a, it's a much quicker recovery after surgery. And also they, they, they avoid these, these negative risks of, uh, of having this post between their legs. Okay, and there have also been advances in hip imaging. Can you explain how that helps you in surgery? Yeah, so the, this is something we've been doing for about the last year now. Um, this is a patient-specific protocol. Uh, it's generated uh, through a, either a CT scan or a, a, maybe in the future an MRI of the patient's hip. This is being done in conjunction with Blue Star Imaging up in Frisco, Texas. Anyone who might be indicated for advanced imaging of the hip, we generate this report. This is called a hip map report. As you can see, it measures some important angles around the hip, but it also gives us these three-dimensional morphologic mm -hmm. images of the patient's own hip to get Get, right. to get it exactly right. We use these images intraoperatively and sometimes even preoperatively to help delineate the, the various pathologies and see whether or not the patient might be a candidate for hip surgery based on just the morphologic characteristics of their hip joint. And, and then as I mentioned, we use these intraoperatively to get our bony resections exactly right to restore normal anatomy and then try and, try and fi fix the patient's pathology that's causing them symptoms. Okay, and you also have a video that we're gonna show. And we're gonna tell you this a little bit graphic, but in order to understand this, you need to see it's not it. Too bad. Uh, can you explain what we're looking at in this video that we're going to be looking at? Sure. So this is this is hip arthroscopy. So this is this is performed through tiny incisions around the patient's hip joint. We're doing it on the same table that we've illustrated here. Uh, this patient underwent imaging, and it showed that they have a pretty large bone spur around their acetabular rim. So we're using a four millimeter burr here, and we're just resecting this extra bone. This is called a pincer lesion around the patient's acetabular rim. And once we've restored stored normal architecture wow. or anatomy around the hip joint, uh, we're going to arthroscopically repair the patient's labrum. Uh, again, this is done on a post-free table. Uh, it's done arthroscopically through tiny incisions and, and, and it's very good for treating intraarticular pathologies like the one you're, you're seeing here. Okay, I want to ask you real quickly something a lot of people are hearing about these days and that's stem cells to treat hip injuries, uh, osteoarthritis, etc. Any quick advice on that? 
Yeah, so I mean, a lot of these stem cell or regenerative medicine clinics are popping up all over the place. Unfortunately, uh, some of the products that they're promoting for these clinics are not in fact stem cell products. They're these amniotic derived uh, products or, or umbilical tissue, which not only don't they contain stem cells, but they might not even contain a viable cell. I think for us available in the United States today, the most reliable source of mesenchymal stem cells is using your own body, either your uh, bone marrow or your adipose tissue, so your fat cells. We take a graft of this, it gets spun down, it develops a mesenchymal stem cell product. These can either be used to treat musculoskeletal conditions like osteoarthritis that you've mentioned, or as an adjunct to surgical uh, procedures like hip arthroscopy to try and regenerate tissue and just improve patient outcomes after surgery. Thank you so much. Lots of good information for lots of people who have these problems. Star Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is in Frisco. The number to call is 469-850-0680 or go to starorthopedics.com for more information. You can follow Dr. Andrew Dold on Instagram at dr.dold.md.